President Joe Biden doesn't need Congress to end marijuana prohibition. I think we should decriminalize marijuana, period. If the president wants to fulfill a key campaign promise, Biden and his administration could start the process today. All on its own, no lawmakers needed. If Obama could use executive authority to bypass congressional inaction on gun control, and Trump could unilaterally withdraw from the Paris Agreement, what's preventing this president from ending the unpopular, decades-long policy that is the war on marijuana? America's public enemy number one. Well, besides the fact that he personally remains opposed to adult use legalization, let's pretend for a minute that Biden did want to keep his promise and decriminalize marijuana. While he can't just sign an executive order, there are a few things he can do. Marijuana remains a Schedule I drug, the most restrictive category which includes drugs like heroin, under the Controlled Substances Act. And that continues to be used by many states to justify the criminalization of people, disproportionately black and brown communities, over cannabis. It also creates research barriers that have inhibited scientists from fully exploring the range of therapeutic benefits and health risks of marijuana. Now, unfortunately for advocates, the statutes that dictate federal drug scheduling don't allow a president to unilaterally remove a controlled substance from the CSA. But there are real steps that can be taken by the administration to reclassify marijuana. Biden could strongly recommend that either the Attorney General or the head of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services submit a petition to initiate the rescheduling process. If that were to happen, the FDA would still need to complete an assessment of the scientific, medical, and public health implications of rescheduling. scheduling, completely removing marijuana from the CSA and treating it like alcohol or tobacco is another matter. Under federal law, there's a level of deference to international treaties. In essence, the Attorney General of the U.S. is bound to follow international rules, and marijuana does remain controlled under those agreements. But let's be honest, the U.S. has routinely flouted international treaties in the past on issues like military engagement. In the interim, Biden isn't powerless he can fundamentally change the course of how this country has approached marijuana. While the process of descheduling marijuana, or legalizing it, is more complicated, there's absolutely nothing stopping the president from using his executive authority to grant mass pardons to people with federal cannabis convictions on their records. This wouldn't be without precedent either. Presidents Gerald Ford and Jimmy Carter in the 1970s granted mass pardons to Americans who avoided the draft for the Vietnam War. A blanket pardon for marijuana offenses is possible too. In fact, a recent report from the Congressional Research Service concluded that Biden could even pardon people who've been charged with a cannabis offense, but not yet convicted. It's exactly the type of relief that lawmakers like Senators Elizabeth Warren and Cory Booker, celebrities like Drake and Killer Mike, and others have pushed the president to provide. But so far, Biden has preserved his pardon power to poultry. <laughs> Marijuana legalization is an incredibly popular policy among Americans, with growing majorities backing the reform regardless of party identity. More than 40% of Americans now live in a state where cannabis is legal for adult use. The president says he supports ending cannabis criminalization and letting states set their own policies. He doesn't want to see people incarcerated over nonviolent marijuana offenses. As president, I'll work to reform the criminal justice system, decriminalize marijuana, and automatically expunge prior marijuana convictions. I'm Joe Biden, and that's my commitment to you. But while he's yet to take action, experts and congressional researchers agree. Biden's hands aren't tied, and he can take immediate steps to provide relief to citizens impacted by prohibition. We're talking about mass clemency, pushing for administrative rulemaking. Heck, if he could just communicate to Congress that this is a priority, that could go a long way toward advancing legislative reform. So what's stopping him? 